Good morning. When I first moved to Fort Wayne, the very first time I was here and I was driving in from Highway 30 because I'd come down from Notre Dame and I was headed to the south side of town, I noticed that there are like, I don't know, 15, 16 lights downtown that are timed. They're timed. So the speed limit is 30. If you go 31 miles per hour, you can coast all the way through without having to hit your brakes. I learned this my first day in town. I have been here over 20 years, and yet every day, every day that I'm driving either northbound or southbound through downtown, somebody, some townie, is still not figuring out the timed light thing, bro. How are you going to hit the gas, speed up, cut me off without turn signals, and then, oh, you've got to slam on your brakes because, don't tell me, the lights are timed. Every time I go that route, it doesn't matter which direction I'm in. Oof. Compare that. Compare that to driving in New York. You don't see all these dinged up cars with missing tail lights and bumpers hanging by wire and red tape over, over the tail lights because of the crappy driving Indiana drivers do. No, you don't see any of that. You see some aggressive, fast reflexes <laughs> to be sure. But for the most part, people put their damn signal on and, and you know what they're going to do. And you learn in a big hurry. You just need to sometimes say a quick Hail Mary and hit the gas, brother. And just do it. You don't see all of this broken down nonsense on the road in New York like you do here. The taxis, who are definitely professional stunt drivers in New York, from every country on the planet. Polished, clean, undented immaculate cars. Come on, Fort Wayne people. Think about this for a minute. I am not fond of tight spaces. I have gotten a little panic attack thing going a couple times in haunted houses, taking the kids there when they were little, crawling through little tunnels that are like, you know, only four feet by four feet. I don't like that stuff. So imagine, <clears throat> imagine being in New York and having to go through those damn tunnels all the time. I don't know what it is, but there's, there's always a reason to go through the damn tunnels. That Lincoln Tunnel, I swear to God, it, it's not even two miles long, but it feels like 20 to me. So one time, I'm in New York, and I am, I'm leaving New York, actually leaving Midtown, and I am going to JFK, got a, got a flight to catch, and I'm in the company limo, and everything is going great, and here comes the damn Lincoln Tunnel, <clears throat> and wouldn't you know, we're only in there for a few seconds and something goes wrong with the limo. And it's overheating or something. And so on a Friday evening at 6 p.m., <laughs> I am in a broken down car in the freaking Lincoln Tunnel. 
So, here's another difference between Midwestern drivers and New York drivers. Where I'm from, people would jump out of their cars and do their best to get you out of the way or give you some help or, you know, I've had people <clears throat> stop and, you know, give me a jug of water out of their trunk when I've been overheating over the years that I've been driving. Big difference. In the Lincoln Tunnel, you realize that you are, you can easily become the most despised human on the planet because traffic simply stops. And unless you're in the middle tube when it's two-way traffic, you know, if you're in the north or south tube, it, it's both lanes are going the same dire direction, right? So you're, you're luckier there. But I'm in the middle tube this time. And so the oncoming traffic is not going to stop to let the people behind me pass. Right? I'm just dying a slow death, cussing, screaming, horn blowing on both sides. Oh my God, that was the longest 10, 15 minutes, I think, of my life. And fortunately, the driver, you know, was able to use his own hand gestures to the, uh, the angry <laughs> New York drivers <laughs> and Jersey drivers. And, and it, he must have had some antifreeze or something in the, in the trunk of the limo because we were, you know, it was only 10 or 15 minutes of of this craziness, but nobody came to assist. Just lots of screaming and, and horn blowing and, oh my God, when we finally got going again, I understood the expression, light at the end of the damn tunnel. I was never so happy to get out of that tunnel. Oh, so here's a simple thought. Life is a damn tunnel. Sometimes. And I know I've lost two of my three sons. I have lost an 18 year relationship. Lost a lot of friends over the years. Lost members of the parish who, you know, for whatever reason could not accept the idea of a recovering pastor. It's disappointing. Losses of every kind. The part of this journey through this, this tunnel of life, when the darkness, you know, seems to just want to swallow us, and whether we're losing our, our job, our career, our home, our reputation, our, our respect from our family members and our peers, it's easy to just throw up our hands and say, F it. F it. And behave like our worse selves and make that darkness worse, not only for ourselves, but for everyone whose lives we touch. We're even angry and frustrated at God sometimes. And we're screaming up into the heavens, is this the best you got for me, seriously? There isn't some other way to live this life? But here's the thing, 14 billion years since the Big Bang, when God did something to create all of this, the good, the bad, the in-between, the whole world, the whole universe has been evolving, <laughs> evolving. And there's nothing in this universe that is perfect. It's good, right? Our Hebrew scriptures tell us God says it's all good. But notice God never says it's perfect because it's not perfect. It's evolving. It's evolving. And that means 
that even God cannot control the process. The only thing God can control is the outcome, the final destination. So when we are in the damn Lincoln Tunnel rush hour on a Friday night trying to get somewhere and we're stuck, maybe the answer is simply to surrender to the reality that we are in the damn tunnel, that the darkness does indeed seem like it could swallow us but it won't. It won't because God loves us unconditionally. God was with us before we slipped into the tunnel. God is with us in the damn tunnel. God is still going to be with us as we move out of the darkness back out into the light. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to cry, to feel disappointed and hurt and betrayed and empty. All of that is okay because it's only temporary. For every damn Lincoln Tunnel breakdown, there is a sunny day just around the bend. That much I know for sure. So if you are one of those people today, on this dark February morning, just take a breath. Remember all the times that God has stood by you in the past, bringing you to this moment in time. And maybe you can't say any kind of prayer today. Maybe today is just a day of taking a breath. That's enough. Just take a breath then. Trust in the process of this life. God has us, whether we feel it or not, whether we can perceive it or not. God is not ever going to drop us on our ass. God of the darkness, you are the light at the end of every tunnel. We thank you for bringing us through so many disappointments and diminishments over the years of our life. Thank you for your faithfulness for your gentle reminders in nature and at the hands of other people, reminders that you are there. There is no place we can go that is beyond the reach of love. And that all of this can work toward our highest, best good. Help us today to choose to see the light and not fear the darkness. And if there are people today whom you send us, help us to be mindful of their situation and their darkness. Help us to be a single candle in the tunnel of their day. We ask all this through your Son, the only begotten, the eternal Word, who with the Holy Spirit continues to live and move and work within us and in our world. Amen. Have a great Saturday.